Hello. I am going to be doing another unboxing. It's been um, probably close to 18 months, a year and a half since my last unboxing. And I am unboxing another book by Orson Scott Card. This one's from Easton Press. The last one was from um, Centipede Press. So let's see what this is like. How do I open it? What's the best way? Let's see. There's this envelope. I feel like I should open the envelope. Let's see what the envelope says. Oh, I got this knife. I'm going to use to open my package. Let's see if I get it. There we go. All right, just one more cut. There we go. Okay. Well, I should definitely not open on this side because this is very, very empty. All right, let's see. What does this envelope say? Okay, envelope says, empty envelope. New and best-selling titles. Interview with a vampire. Don't want it. Nope. Zeus had many women. What in the world? This looks very pop art for it to be so fancy. All right, uh, this is a book plate. I assume they want me to put it in the book, but we'll see if I want to do that. Priority reservation form. Apparently they want me to priority reserve some of these books. Um, so we just got our bill and we got priority reservation. This I'm going to throw away because I don't want to buy another one right now. I may buy another one next year. I'm thinking about buying another one of these Ender's Game books, but... Not any of the other books they're trying to sell me. So here's the box. It's extra long because they put empty space on the box to protect the book itself. Um, I'm very excited. I'm very excited to see what this is like. So let's see. Unlike how I got my scar on my wrist, I'm cutting away from myself this time. All right. Let's see. It's tricky figuring out the best way to cut this tape because I don't want to damage the book at all, you know? So I'm trying to just use the tip of the knife so it doesn't go into the package. There we go. Ah, I should not have worried as much, though, because the package is very nice in that it has a full coverage of the book itself so i like this package just unfold and then inside you have the book and as i said there's these two uh this is really thoughtfully designed it has this whole protection thing going on for the book all right so it's a two-piece box so this is an insert so it's basically a sheet of cardboard with a with another sheet of cardboard folded as an insert. That's really clever in its simplicity and effectiveness. I really like that. Very attractive. All right, so here's the book. Uh, the book is shrink-wrapped, so now I must carefully uh, unshrink-wrap it. So I've got a little tear, and then I will try and carefully just rip off the shrink-wrap because I want to be able to read this book. Yes. All right, 
almost done. There we go. All right, so the full book unwrapped. Now, throw away these little plastic bits. Oh, let's see. So, this is the book. It is the same cover, front and back. A gold print um, of the small child with the, uh, what's it called? The shadow, because it's Ender's shadow, obviously. And it's gold leaf. And it has a bookmark. I do like that bookmark. Let me see what that bookmark looks like. Uh -huh. So we've got our bookmark here. All right, let's see. It's a very wide bookmark. And I've got a nice cut. That's pretty nice. Um, yeah, that's a very nice ribbon bookmark. All right, let's see. So we have the sort of reflective, wavy cloth type uh, end papers. We also have A certificate of authenticity, and it's signed by the author last year, September 1st, 2001. Uh, witnessed by his wife. I actually have a, a wife signature. Pretty sweet, honestly. He's She's his first reader um, of all his books. And a moderator and just great gal, apparently. And then uh, signed by Jeffrey O'Neill, publisher of Easton Press. So funny, it's just a year old. Oh, and there's a little, oh, I got to look at this. A note about Ender's Shadow and the author. So this is sort of like what they usually put on a dust jacket, basically. Yeah. Yeah, so that's very cool. A note. Uh, signed Modern Classics, apparently, is what this edition is called. And it says... This leather-bound edition of Ender's Shadow is personally signed by Orson Scott Card. So this is my second Orson Scott Card signed book. Unfortunately, both of them don't really matter because I haven't met him myself. But you can see he's got the big signature that you're used to. Um, I, will, I will show you my other one and compare them. Uh, this one's more centered than the other one. I'm sure he has to sign like hundreds of these when they do a printing because they give him a stack of paper and then he has to sign them all. Ah, the life of an author. Hopefully they pay. Ender's Shadow. So actually, I want to show my previous copy, why I wanted to buy this. As this is, my previous copy is the sixth printing of the first mass market paperback edition. Um, and it's pretty beat up. I bought it used. Um, a long, long time ago. I think it was, it was like 2005-ish. Um, and let's see. So, Ender's Shadow, the opening. We've got that font. And then Ender's Shadow uh, for the mass market paperback. we got that font. So, let's see. <clears throat> So it's a completely type, new typeset, new font. Um, yep, it says, signed, collector's edition, bound in genuine leather. Very exciting. Does it smell like leather? Oh, what does the book smell like on the inside? I love smelling books. <clears throat> oh, nice smell. Kind of cool. Um, like a it, it's a smell that makes me think of coolness. All right, so. Copyright 1999. Edited Beth Meacham. Special contents of this edition are copyright 2021. Um, printed on archive quality paper, especially milled, acid neutral, as nice. Printed and bound to the United States of America. 
So this is American made. Now the forward is the same forward that we got in the original. It's also in the paperback, which is nice. Uh, the text, yeah, it's completely new typeset. The text is very nice. I wonder if they have a note on the font in the back. Let's see if there's a note on the font in the back. No, there's not a note on the font. Maybe there was a note on the font in the front. Let me double check. Maybe I missed it. So no note on the font, but it's a very nice font. It's not Garamond, I don't think, because I usually recognize Garamond. But it's a, it's a nice font. Let me uh, pick a place to put the bookmark. Let's see, what's the best way to do this? I don't have a ton of books with bookmarks in them, so sometimes I'm a little awkward about it. There we go. All right, then we'll just flip around the ribbon. Flip her around. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, oh, there we go. Okay, so got that ribbon back in the book. And I'm going to put the, the note about Ender Shadow. And I'm going to put the Certificate of Authenticity in the book, too. Just keep them there, because why not? Maybe they're not printed on acid-neutral paper, but that would surprise me, honestly. It would surprise me if they had this whole book printed on acid-neutral paper and then they didn't print the Certificate of Authenticity, which you would assume they'd keep with the book on acid-neutral paper, too. So I'm going to assume that. Um, yeah, this is very nice. Nothing really special about the interior contents other than the fact that it's probably my favorite of the entire series which is why i chose this one i was thinking about getting children of the mind because i really like that edition and that is my favorite of the shadow series no the speaker series um but i looked at my co i actually literally just bought a new copy of shadow uh a new copy of children of the mind um in the new paper paperback edition that they printed to match the newest book, The Last Shadow. And so I felt like buying another one would feel it would feel more wasteful than the fact that I'm already spending $150 on a book. Um, but very good, very good. Um, I do want to compare it to the last book I got uh, with the signature. Right. So this is the Centipede Press copy of Ender's Way. Pop open the book. All right. And here is the actual book. So you can compare them. This is much, much bigger. Um, let's see if I can get them flat on the bottom. It's like a full two inches almost uh, bigger. Um, and it has this really beautiful paint cover. But the materials of the actual cover are, of course, bonded like linen or whatever it is they use. I'll pop it open so we've got the sticker on the front and then the, the binding itself is this nice quality cloth cloth bound so i do like a good cloth bound book too um all right so this one also has a blue ribbon uh, bookmark yep that one's kind of oddly placed um and then the signature page of this one is actually in the back and so as i said this one is signed um on the, it's not centered which isn't bad but it it makes it feel odd to me and this one is signed by the cover artist the interior artist and arson scott card it is copy 195 out of 300 so i was roughly two-thirds of the way through people who managed to get their orders in uh, i did pre-order i let them know that i wanted to order and they emailed me the link early um 
Oh, and let's see. Does this have a date that it was signed? This doesn't have a date that it was signed, but it's copyright 2020. Although they produced it. I guess the, the copyright would have gotten before they produced. They actually produced the book in 2021. I knew that because that's when I ordered it as soon as I could. And I got it in April of that year, which you can see if you check the, um, the other video that I linked. So, yeah. I do. I I love this Ender's Way collection because it's everything I wanted. It's all, pretty much all. I think there might be one missing at this point because, yeah, there's there's a novella missing and then there's a, a draft missing, a draft that doesn't count because it actually isn't part of the story anymore because he started a draft of The Last Shadow and then he completely scrapped it. And I really liked it. And he published that as its own short story in an anthology called uh, dark horizons but i like the the story we got a little better not that i would have minded seeing the other one but this has all the stories up to 2020 and i just love so many of the stories and if you read the stories together um although they're not arranged chronologically which is a bit of a bummer um but if you read the stories chronologically you really start to see the way the um orson scott card was thinking about all the all the things because the short stories were written from approximately oh, i want to say 2003 when he started intergalactic medicine show uh up to about 2017 ish where he was just thinking about all the stuff that happens before ender's game so it's about his parents and it's got a very fairy tale-esque quality and he worked that into ender in exile which was written also around the time that he wrote these so let me see if these are I don't think they're arranged chronologically, but I could be wrong. Okay, so uh, Polish Boy, Teacher's Miss... No, so Mazer in Prison, chronologically, should be much before Polish Boy. Um, so I think these might be arranged in publication order, maybe. I can find out. Actually, no, they're not even arranged, because Gloriously Bright is the last story, I think, collected... Yeah, Gloriously Bright is the last story collected in this book, and that is uh, a 1991 story. And it's technically actually just like the first three chapters of Xenocide. <sighs> so we got 2007, 2006. Uh, 2008. Investment counselor. Yeah, I have no clue, zero clue whatsoever how they organize this book. But I love it. I love this book. A lot it's very very pretty um i hope that i come to love this book i'm probably gonna have to read through it to feel how it feels to read it i of course have read ender shadow dozens of times it's one of my favorite books um but yeah it's really cool to have these two special editions now um and maybe next year uh, i bought this for myself for my birthday maybe next year i will buy that children of the mind because that is the other one in the series that i would want to get um and I, I wanted to, to show off. I wore my special uh, International Fleet jacket while I was doing this unboxing. This was a promotional item that I got when I bought <clears throat> Children of the Fleet new. So I bought this pre-ordered, and uh, I submitted my receipt to Goodreads, I think it was. And or Scott Card was running a promotion on Goodreads where if you sent in your receipt for pre-order, you also got this great patch for international fleet because it's children of the fleet obviously um and of course i also have the last shadow which i bought last year i bought three copies one for myself one for my parents and one for my brother dalen who is a huge fan of the series as well and definitely not my favorite book in the series but i really liked it a lot of people were very disappointed and frustrated i totally understand why it's a weird weird book but I really like the weird books. I really, I love Children of the Fleet. And that's a very weird book, but it's my favorite of the four. Uh, no, not the four, the three speaker books. Um, I do like Ender's Game better than it, but I I have not chosen to get a special edition of Ender's Game, partly because I think I've got hipster tendencies and I just don't want to be the guy who falls into that. And partly because they tend to be super expensive and sold out. Um, I definitely didn't want to get the Centipede Press because that one is just selling for like thousands of dollars on eBay. But... That is my unboxing of Ender's Shadow. So, uh, great book. Recommend it wholeheartedly. 
Um, this edition is really nice, but unless you have $150 you want to burn on a book you haven't read before, check it for the library, get the paperback, try it first. And if you like it, then this is a great option. 